Hi, it's Steve. Today we're going to show you how to change the dispenser hose on your front load washer and it's a really easy job. All we're going to need is a quarter inch nut driver, a number 20 Torx screwdriver, a flat blade screwdriver, and a pair of pliers. Let me show you how we do it. Now before we begin this repair, the first thing we'll need to do is to disconnect power to the washer and then we're also going to pull it far enough forward that we can access the back to remove some screws. So using our number 20, so using our quarter inch nut driver, we'll remove three screws that are located across the back of the top panel. And then we'll just slide that top back about a half an inch and then we can lift it up and set it aside. Now next we'll pull the dispenser drawer forward, depress the release lever and then remove it and set it aside. We'll take our number 20 torch screwdriver and we'll remove a single screw that's just to the left of the opening for the dispenser. We'll next take the flat blade screwdriver. We'll go in on the right hand side and we'll depress this little plastic tab that holds the console to the front of the cabinet. And then across the top there are three more tabs that we can release. So just take your flat blade screwdriver, locate those, and gently lift the console up above those. We can pull it forward and then sit it on top of the washer out of the way. Now next we'll remove three quarter inch hex edge screws that are located below the bottom access panel. And then just support that panel as you remove the last screw. Then let the panel drop down and pull it away and set it aside. Now next we'll open the door and using our number 20 torque screwdriver will remove these two screws that secure the door lock assembly to the front panel and then with a flat blade screwdriver we'll just go around the bottom of this bellows and you'll note that there is a spring on that clamp and a hook on the end of the spring so we're just going to take that flat blade fit it into that hook and pull some tension on that spring to release the clamp Lift it off and set it aside. You can then take that bellows, peel it away from the front panel. Then we'll just tuck it back inside the opening. And then close that door. Now next we'll remove two quarter inch hex head screws at the bottom corners of that front panel. And next we'll remove the two screws at the top, one in each corner. And as we do that we'll need to support that front panel and door assembly. Then just carefully lift it out from the bottom, let it drop down, and then pull it away so we can set it aside. Now next, using our slip joint pliers, we're going to remove that clamp on the hose end that attaches to the dispenser. We'll just squeeze that clamp shut and pull it back down onto the hose. And we can remove the hose from the dispenser. And then the end of the hose that fits into the front of the tub is just a friction fit. We can pop that out. Now we'll need to remove the clamp and install it on the new hose. And again, we'll just pull it up around the corner of that bend. Now you'll note on the hose that there is a small indicator tab that will line up with a notch on the front of the dispenser. And you'll also note on the end of the hose that attaches to the tub front, there's a little indicator mark and one on the tub front as well. So we'll begin by inserting the end of the hose into the tub, push it all the way into the opening, and then pull it back out until the flange fits flush against the face of the outer tub. Make sure the indicator mark lines up. Then we'll attach the other end of the hose to the dispenser. Again, making sure that that indicator lines up. And then we'll depress that clamp. Slide it up fully onto the end of the hose. And now we can put the front panel back on. When reinstalling the front panel, we're going to tuck these 
top two corners and underneath this cross piece. And we'll need to support that whole front panel until we install the screws. Securely. And then we'll put the two bottom corners And then we'll install the two screws in the bottom corners. Next, we'll open the door up and we'll pull that boot out of the way. And we'll line up the door latch assembly, make sure it fits snugly in that opening, and install the two retaining screws, and then tighten those with the number 20 Torx driver. And then we'll pull that bellows out through the opening and then we're going to hook the lip of that around that front panel where there's a little groove and we'll need to fit that carefully all the way around make sure it fits into that V groove nice and snug and when it's installed right the outer edge of that bellows will lay flat against the front panel Next, we'll take the spring clamp and we're going to position that again so that the spring is in around the six o'clock position. So we'll feed that wire into the groove all the way around. Then using our needle nose pliers, we'll just grip that hook on the end of the wire, stretch the spring, and then fit that wire right into that v-groove make sure it's seated properly now next we'll install the bottom access panel so we're just going to tuck that up in underneath the front panel making sure that this raised lip fits snugly up into place and we'll install the screw in the center first and tighten that securely and then we'll install the two outside ones and again make sure that they're nice and tight And now we'll go ahead and put the control panel and the top back on. So we're going to make sure that the tab at the bottom center of that console will line up with the rectangular opening in this cross piece. Then we can just firmly push that into place, making sure that the top three tabs lock into position, as well as the one on the right hand side. We'll reinstall that screw on the left of the dispenser opening. Reinstall the dispenser, lining up the rail on the left first. Pushing it all the way in, make sure that it engages properly. Then we'll put the main top on. Line that up side to side and just set it down about a half an inch back from the console. Push it forward, that should engage both sides. Then we'll reinstall those three retaining screws at the back. We're now ready to reconnect the power and our repair is complete.